Hi everybody, how are you doing today? So I'm going to do a video to give you some assistance and perhaps some information if you'd like to use it as I've done a couple videos on the paranormal and uh, how it's important to just, whether you have paranormal activity in your home or not, that over time as we live in our houses, we can build up negative and static and uh, kind of sluggish stationary um, energy in our homes. And we want to kind of maintain that um, because we have different personalities living in your houses. People have different moods and we have a tendency to bring that stuff in our environment. So um, we're going to talk about some cleansing of paranormal and how to kind of maintain that uh, through the time that you're living in locations. Okay, um, one of the number one things that I have a big pet peeve about is that about moving into a new house and leaving your old house. And I can say, I guess we can say as a whole globe, through the years we've moved a lot paranormally. Um, over the past, you know, especially 10 to 20 years now that we have platforms like YouTube where people are seeing paranormal videos and you can make your judgment on what you think is real or not. But one of the things I think we can agree that there is something there, what, however you want to, um, describe your, your, um, experience or not experience with something that is different than the realm that we're in. Okay, and I believe that things are changing in our world right now um, quite a bit. We are in, in, in wonderful times, but uh, different end times, but you've been picked to live in that time. And I would believe that the veil is thinning a little bit um, and more paranormal activity and different experiences are coming through um, always, but it's getting, it seems like it's getting stronger. Okay, so let's go back here, right here. The, the number one thing I have up here is spiritual cleanse your house before you leave your old house. Now, you don't have to do this, but it's kind of, um, it's kind of like, um, when you have somebody coming behind you that you're doing something nice for them. You don't have to do it, but I think that people should. When you've packed up, and I know it's crazy to move, and, and you leave, there are different methods that you can do, which I'm going to go over in a minute, to clean your house out before the next people come. Um, and when we go over those methods, but it's just the idea to maybe clean your property out um, before you leave so that the next people aren't dealing with your stuff, okay? Um, it would be kind of nice. But if you don't do that because your move is so crazy and, and things are going on in your life, um, that's okay. But the most important thing that you're going to do is you're going to, um, before you move into your next location, you want to um, definitely, definitely check out where you're going to move. Um, you want to check out the, um, you want to check out the land how old the house is, um, not everybody um, has to disclose in states of things that are happening um, or things that have happened, maybe somebody died, okay? Um, they don't have to disclose it, so that's my disclaimer. Um, some states and cities have to and some do not, but you can research it yourself um, and find out and maybe and ask questions. And if it's an older property, like an old home, like in, built before the 50s or on, you maybe want to check the history of the land and, and ask. But before you go, you want to do, um, you definitely want to do um, a cleansing on the property. And you want to... Um, make sure that where you're going um, is going to be clean for you and your family. Okay? 
we're going to go ahead now and discuss um, sage. Okay, so it's considered smudging and it is the number one most popular way that people use to clean out negative energies, negative entities, um, because you can do it and it is effective. And this is what sage is. It comes in this round uh, part, this round area. This It's round and in yarn. And you can get a bowl or some type of a... a and you want to be careful because it, 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 you're going to set it, you're going to light it up. So, but smudging um, is an, important because it was considered by the shamans. They used it way back when to get an evil... And not to go into the full history of it, but you can read about it. The reason why they used it is because they realized that evil does not like it. It does not like the smell of it. Okay, it, it cannot stand it. So um, when you go to smudge, what you want to do is make sure it's just you or somebody. It's good if you can get your family gone for the time, an hour or two depending on whether you have an apartment, a small space, or a big house, or land on a big piece of property also, because I do my land as well. Um, you want to get a couple of those, and I'll go in in a minute where you can purchase it. Um, you want to take a bowl, and you want to open up all the windows in your house, in every window, and when you begin to sage, it's good to have a prayer with you. You can go online and look up smudging prayers or telling people to move on or you can kind of have your own but as you're smudging and what you want to do is I always start from the back of the house and move forward and then I go outside so start in your bedroom and your closets you want to open up the closets the bathroom you're going to get a container that's going to contain that because when you light it on you're going to light it it takes a while and it's going to grab smoke and you want it real smoky and you're going to take it, and some people use it in their hand. I don't do that. I actually leave it in the container that it's in, and I get it really smoky. And you want to go through your closets and let it fill your closets, your bathroom, all the corners of your room, the hallways, the, ba the bathrooms behind the shower curtains, laundry rooms. And you want to slowly go through all the bedrooms, la laundry offices, the living room that nobody uses all the time with the, you know, the table that looks like a museum <laughs> in some of the houses into the great room where the family is into your kitchen. And then you do want to go to your garage. Um, you don't need to open the garage door, but open the door that goes from your garage out to the yard. Typically we have one of those smoke that whole thing up. And then you want to walk your property line, walk outside around your fence that goes around your house and walk all the way through your backyard, along your property fence, and all the way back around up to your house. If you have a patio, you wanna walk around it. Then you wanna to go to the front of your home. You wanna to go to your front door, your porch. You wanna go all the way around your property line, your sidewalk, even if you live in the suburban area. It doesn't matter. I do this often at, at nighttime, usually between transition, so my neighbors don't see me walking around with a plate of smoke. But I walk my property line. I actually even walk on the sidewalk around. I walk around my cars, and I do the entire house, and it smokes out. I do this every couple months, not because I have paranormal activity, because I don't. Um, it's because of... Um, you have people in your house and the thinking and people have good times and bad times and people have anger um, and there might be fighting. So in order to keep the environment from collecting sluggish energy, you're moving this out. And if you have any paranormal activity come in and out, it's going to kind of be on its way. Now, my belief system is there is no paranormal free home. Um, that doesn't mean that you have like a poltergeist all the time, which some people have. You, your space will probably be clear and peaceful most of the time, but every once in a while we do get things that come in and out and they typically move on. And I believe that with all homes. That's my own opinion. Okay, so that's how you're going to use sage. This is kind of, this is what it looks like. 
And when you go to the store, and I'm going to let you know what stores those are, um, they have it in baskets like this. And some people will sell it in, they'll give you little plastic bags to put in it. And when I always have a big one, I buy a couple extra so I don't have to keep going back to the store. Um, you want to get like Ziploc bags or maybe a Tupperware that you're not using and you want to seal it up in there and keep it nice and wrapped up so it doesn't smell all the time, but you have it when you need to smudge. And another thing I was going to tell you is that we also do our cars. Um, we, if we go somewhere with somebody and they've got a friend that's got negative energy or whatever, I open up my car, I, I smoke the whole thing out and I walk around the car and I, I don't do that all the time. I probably do it maybe twice a year, but you can do your cars. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Um, okay. So we'll talk about smudging in just a few minutes. Over here on the right side of the screen, you're looking at sweet grass. And it kind of comes in this form, but it comes in bundles and in bags. And, um, and you want sweet grass is really important because a lot of times people will push the sage, okay? And you want to burn sweet grass after you sage. Now, you don't want to do it right away. You could wait a day if you want to. I think that's best. You don't have to, you know, let the sage clear out because that smell will go away after a couple hours um, after you do it. It takes a while depending how much you burn, but it, event, it goes away. And I will tell you personally, after I've saged, um, I usually do it before holidays a lot and stuff because you're going to have people coming over. I always notice that it seems like the, any little tension that we had in our house has been rested. Everything is peaceful and calm. You know, I've actually witnessed, you know, that it, it's effective. Okay, so then um, you want to do sweetgrass because a lot of people forget sweetgrass because what sweetgrass does um, is sweetgrass brings in the positive. You want to burn it and you can say a prayer, only want positive here, angels, whatever your belief system is, but this is going to bring in the positive, okay? Um, and also, let me go back to when you're smudging your home. You do want to say prayers, okay? And if you have something negative, like you think somebody hasn't moved on or you have something um, that's hanging out that shouldn't be there, you need to be firm and intend, okay, when you have an entity there that shouldn't be. You need to tell them that this is my space, this is where I live, and I want you to move on. And I usually tell them to go back to where they came from. Do not stop or visit anybody on the way, but you need to go. And you want to, after you smudge your house with paranormal activity, you want to say, um, in Jesus Christ, um, God protect my home. You want to say a prayer, um, I believe in Jesus Christ, so that's who I would um, talk about wanting to protect my home. And, um, and you want to send that negativity away, and you have to demand it. I, okay, so in my experience and in my opinion, um, in the times that I have had paranormal, um, this has worked. I have cleaned the house, okay? But you need to intend it and don't be afraid because you've got God with you. And it does not like it. It does not like it. It does not like it. Now, if you have, if you has a, have a, a problem with something that keeps returning, then my, um, then maybe perhaps you need to seek out a psychic or a medium or a paranormal the church and have somebody come in and help you clean it out yourself. Okay. But this is, um, uh, most of the time works. I can't guarantee it, but in my opinion and my, my lifestyle, it has worked and gotten rid of anything that might be there. And it also helps keep the maintenance of your energy in the home. Okay. So back to sweet grass, you want to make sure that you um, use sweet grass when you are done smudging and I say wait a day.
okay? And again, you're gonna open all the windows. You're gonna put it in a safe plate of fire, you know, fire safety and, and burn it uh, through the home. Okay, um, other methods um, of, oops. Other methods of um, that you can do, and you can look these up. These are just other ones that some people use. Is you can use Florida water. Um, Florida water was used in Peru and South America. They believe that use that for to keep evil out as well. Um, you can also use crystals. Some people use crystals. Um, the energies and crystals they hold energy. Um, and so it's very useful, but these are things that you would have to look into in depth. I'm just naming a few of them. You can also use incense and then some people use sea salt. Um, they go in and they sprinkle around their house, in the house, in the corners, on the outside. Um, it neutralizes the energy they say. So you can also look that up if you would prefer that, um, method. And then... The olive oil, the olive oil is a Christian tradition, um, and they use olive oil. They um, anoint the house. They usually put it on their fingers, and they dab it and sprinkle it through the home in the corners, or they, they go to the door, and they put, like, the sign of the cross on the outside of the door and the inside before they move in on all four cor on the top in the middle of the door, panel frame on the side of the middle of the door panel frame this is to your front door on the other side and on the bottom they do the sign of the cross with the olive oil and they do it a lot of, a lot of people have done it to all the doors the door from your garage into your house the garage door into the garage and some people go so far to do it above their windows on the top of the window the side the side and the side the olive oil and then they they also ask for god's blessing to bless their home Okay, um, we also have um, the most, one, one of the uh, popular traditions is that we have a priest come in to bless your home, which I think is a great idea. Um, you can have them come or whatever your belief system is. You have your pastor and have somebody come and give a blessing to your, to your home. Okay, and then these items, let's see, where are we? These items that you're going to buy, the, the sweet grass and the sage, um, you can order it online. But a lot of your today's smoke shops, the ones that sell, um, um, you know, different cigarettes, cigars, and all the vaping, um, you can go into those. Um some natural food stores like Whole Foods, for example. Um, it may be different naming your town, have that. Um, but a lot of those kind of stores, a lot of the smoke shops will have it. They have it in baskets like you see in the bundles. Um, and it's like anywhere from 4 to $12, depending on what state you live in or what kind of a bundle that you get. And then you also have sweet grass. So it'll be different pricing, but you can usually get both of them in the same place. Okay. And then um, I talked a little bit about this before, but when you're when you're moving on to a new location um, and you're going to go to a new place, you want to find out um, as much about it as you can. Um, and, you know, a lot of houses are fine. Um, and. I, I don't know how many you've lived in, but I've lived in a couple houses that needed some help. Okay. Before you go, you want to check out your new location for sure. Okay. So we're going to talk about real estate agents. Okay. And if there's anybody that's hearing this is a real estate agent or you guys know somebody, they have a very big job and I kind of not really go after them, but I have to put them on notice because real estate agents have a very big pivotal job and they don't really understand how big it is on a spiritual level. I understand they go and they're out for the buck 
and they're, you know, one one family is selling a house to another family and another family is moving or they're selling a land or a condo or whatever. Um, but they're all about usually the dollar. I'm not saying that they don't care, but they are out for the dollar. And one of the biggest things about real estate agents that I think they need to understand is that they're moving people from one environment to the other and they need to understand that the houses that they that they deal with the home and the land that there's history in those homes and land if it's older property and that things may have happened on the land or somebody may have passed away and like i said before there's disclosure agreements some don't have to some do and i would really appreciate if some of the realtors out there would disclose if there was something that happened there so that the people know and they can decide to move in and how they should approach cleaning that house out um i'm sure there's some real estate agents out there that have set up homes before by themselves and had eerie feelings or something weird and i would tell real estate agents if you don't believe what i'm saying you think it's a load of crap you know what i'm talking about okay if you experience something like that you need to take notice of that because that means that whoever's coming in may end up feeling that too which means that something may not right so if the real estate agents have houses they too can sage their homes they have access to the house they can clean it up and they can clean it out and if they have land going on if they have a house they can't sell because it's notorious something happened there um, what I'm trying to say to everyone right now is that houses need healings and cleansings whether anything bad or happened or not before you go in or before you leave your home you need to clean it out because we are all express putting out different energy and i think real estate agents have a big responsibility in that um because they're the ones that are having more access to the property they know more history about the property that they're selling and the houses that they're selling to people so i'm just asking you all to key in on that and understand that i know you're out for the buck and you want to make that sale but you need to understand that you have a bigger part of selling a house to a family and a piece of land especially if it has history and it might be fine we have lots of property that's fine but there's a lot of stuff that's not fine okay just uh pointing that out okay and then keeping your area peaceful and protecting your home um your area peaceful you want to keep your area peaceful um you want to really watch um you really want to watch the people that you have come to your house um we have different different visitors that are coming and you know you you know you want to know the people in your circle what they do and it's not because they got you know some ghost hanging on to them but it depends on the energy that's in your home you know you want to keep a peaceful environment and your family day to day has different um things happening in their lives and the things that we that we think about um we we have positive thoughts and we have negative thoughts but those things can manifest okay and um the other thing i want to say is i love secondhand stores or people give you stuff and i'm not saying to not go and buy things at se secondhand stores definitely do but when you're picking up items somewhere that were given to you or um things that you're bringing home from different uh places whether they're used not typically new things but used uh, you just want to make sure because if something is attached or something starts happening after you brought something home Then you might want to think of getting rid of it now What I mean by grid getting rid of it is do not put it back in the box and go give it back to the secondhand stores um, You probably want to maybe destroy it or throw it away 
so that nobody has it or go to a paranormal person um, and tell them you think this is happening and maybe get some advice on how to get rid of something like that. Now, that doesn't happen all the time, but it's it has happened, okay? All right, well, that's my video, and um, I hope everybody will maybe benefit something like this. And again, this isn't just if you have paranormal, but if you do have something in your home, uh, this will definitely help uh, keep a balance of, of good energy. And I, I believe in God and Jesus Christ, and I always tell everybody to have Jesus in your heart and God extremely close to you, the Holy Spirit, all the time. I can subscribe if you have any questions about it and some of those other methods you can look it up online. All right, and I'm going to go now, and like I said before, please make sure you clean your homes before you move into them, and there should be blessings with priests if you had somebody pass away. It's just a good thing to do because we want to live in our environment. We want to live in our realm, and although we know that the paranormal is there, we don't want it always there because it's always it agitates and it interferes with our life, and then we can't live our life. So that's what we want to do. All right. Good day. Take care. God bless. Until the next video.